Okay, within the context of the entrepreneurial series, uh, I want to talk about people's capacity and the capacity particularly to steal your dream. Uh, a lot of times I'll ask people, uh, can I take your happiness away from you? And they'll say, nope. And I'll say, mm, okay. And then I'll say something particularly personal, and all of a sudden they're screaming and yelling at me. And I say, okay, I just, I just want to show you that, I, that anybody can do that, I think. I think anybody, even if you have a real strong emotional intelligence, a real strong base, that people can come up and get you engaged in such a way that you're not being you, that you're out in an enculturated, reactive world where you're not doing what you want to do, but you're reacting to somebody doing something who has done something to you. Now, one of the things I asked one of my clients in my last class, I mean, it's a question I ask very often, um, because I want to get how honest people are. And I said to her, would you steal my dream if you could? Oh, no. No, no, I would not do that. And I said, okay, I'm going to keep talking, and I'm going to point out to you how that's not a true statement. You're lying to me right now. I am not lying. I said, yeah, you are. I'll tell you, if, if we got let's say into a personal relationship, let's say, I mean, this woman and I wouldn't have, but if we got into a personal relationship and I did something you didn't want me to do, well, and then you start looking and you see people will take offense at something you've said or done, and then the next thing is, well, they don't deserve to be living that dream, is the unconscious loop that goes on, and they'll just make a real snide comment. Something that sticks with you. Something that sticks and rolls around and around and around. And so it takes consciousness. It takes watching people. It takes watch out for your dream. Uh, paying attention to the dream. Paying attention to the people around you. If somebody comes into your life and you continually find yourself doubting your dream after they've left, probably a good idea to get them to move on in your life. And if you can't, don't discuss your dream with them. You know what I mean? It's just, how's business going? I thought, good. Oh, that good? Yep, really good. Thank you very much. Um, listen, I don't think you should be. Okay, fine, thanks. And then you change the subject. You know, if you go into battle with them, you go into the conflict, you go into... And that's a whole other world that seem to that people seem to be driven into. Uh, I think it was the movie What the Bleep. There was a nutty professor, and he said that the same chemicals are released when a person is excited as when they're in conflict. And some people are drawn to conflict, and they keep creating conflict around them. Again, if that's their M.O., if that's how they get things done, then you have to pay attention. Uh, my mentor, Martin, talked about a man that did his class, and he worked on lasers, a real sophisticated laser system years ago. And he came to the class because his wife did the class. And what we had heard about him was that he was quite cantankerous and irascible and would upset the apple cart, and and that the lasers weren't working very well. Now, Martin was invited back into this company after the man did a, his class because they, he went and he said, okay, what, what got your attention? Why do you want me to come into your class? And he said, well, <coughs> excuse me, before Sid did the class, man, I know what he did. Um, he was irascible, he was cantankerous, he was argumentative, and the lasers didn't work. So after he did the class, Sid was irascible, cantankerous, argumentative, but the lasers have started working. It's the results. Look at the results. If a person is getting results and they're doing it in a way that doesn't, you don't like, get over it. Unless you just can't stand it and get rid of them. But if they're getting the results for you as the entrepreneur, then look and see, can you soothe that out? <coughs> when I went into the went into a marketing company, we went in in October, the top producer left at the end of October, right? And the owner didn't want the top producer to leave because they were going to their highest productive season, Thanksgiving Christmas market. Uh, the top producer left, uh, we looked at the numbers at the end of the year, and without the top producer, they had done 15% better than the year before. Uh, I had an associate doctor. Uh, he was making demands. We were friends. We had agreed to work together for a while. 
a year, and it was not working out. It was causing me a lot of stress. I went to a management company, and they said, get rid of him. I thought that I was doing us a favor, so I gave him six weeks' notice. Um, but we'll talk about that in another uh, video. This is getting on in length. This is a little over five minutes. I don't want to bore you, so www.micpeakperformance.com.